Hello, in this video I would like to discuss uh, modified pulse routing or level pull routing. So when you're doing routing you are usually given the input function which is your inflow hydrograph and you use the transfer function which is your routing method and the channel characteristics or your detention basin characteristics to get a downstream hydrograph which is your outflow hydrograph. So if you compare the inflow hydrograph and the outflow hydrograph, you will see that there is a reduction in peak, which is called attenuation. And you will also see that there is a delay in the peak flow, which is called translation of the peak flow. So when you're doing analysis, um, you're usually given the inflow and outflow hydrographs. And you're supposed to design your um, detention basin. And when you're doing synthesis, you are given your inflow hydrograph, which is coming from your rainfall event, and you use your detention basin characteristics or your channel characteristics to figure out your outflow hydrograph. And a good way to look at this is your bathtub. So it's a, you can see that your uh, inflow is coming from your tap, which will slowly fill your bathtub, which is your storage and your drain is your outflow. So you have your inflow as a function of time and your outflow as a function of time. Depending on which is greater, you may have an increase or a decrease in storage, right? So if you have a high inflow and outflow doesn't change, then your bathtub is going to fill faster, which is your storage is going to increase. Um, same thing, if your outflow is greater, which is your drain is has a bigger hole or, you know, you're draining faster, then your storage is going to deplete faster. We can write this mathematically as follows. Right? This is a basic math balance equation. So if you know the inflow with time and the outflow with time, which is your inflow flow rate and the outflow flow rate, you can tell the change in storage with respect to time. So a small change in storage with a small change in time can be written as the inflow at that time minus the outflow at that time. And we can further simplify this as um, as follows, right? So if you were to uh, use subscripts for the current time and future time, which is subscript one is your current time and subscript two is your future time after time delta t, you can tell that the difference in storage, which is S2, storage at your future time, and S1 is the storage at your current time divided by the change in time. And you usually use the average inflows and average outflows uh, at those two time steps to get this relationship. So you can simplify this further into these three parameters. And we use these three parameters to do our modified pulse routing. And you can see how we get most of the information from the storage characteristic and your outflow characteristic, right? So depending on how much water you have in your detention basin and depending on the type of, type of outflow structure you have, you can tell how your outflow is changing. So depending on your outflow structures, sometimes you can use a pipe or you can also use a weir. And most of the times for detention basins, you use a weir. And we have done this experiment in water resources, right? So if you have a weir and based on the height of water over the weir, you have an equation that tells you how your water is flowing over the weir. So this outflow characteristics and the depth characteristic tells you the change in outflow with respect to the height of water in your detention basin. Same thing, if you know the type of reservoir you have, and if you know the height of water in your reservoir, you can tell the volume of water, the storage of your water in the reservoir, right? So if I tell you the height of water in your bathtub, you can multiply by the surface area of your bathtub and give me an approximate value of how much storage, how much water you're storing in there. So we combine these two to get the parameter C here, which is 2S by delta T plus O. So you combine the outflow plus the storage to get this combined characteristic. And we will use this in our routing process. So the, we're, do, we're going to do problem one that we solved in class. I want to make sure everybody gets this. Um, so you are given the 
height versus storage. So sometimes you may have to calculate this information, but in this case you're given. So if you know the height of water, you, your storage value is given. And you're also given the weir elevation, which is 5.5 meters, and the equation for weir, which is 1.83 h power 3 by 2. And you're also given the inflow hydrograph, which is this information. So I input my elevation versus storage information here, and we can calculate my outflow based on the equation given here, right? So if my height of the weir is 5.5 meters and the water elevation is 5, then all of my water is still behind the weir. So I don't get any outflow, which is zero. Same thing if it's 5.5, which is at the height of the weir. So I'm not going to get any new water out, right? So after it gets to 6 meters, there is 0.5 meters of water pooling over the weir crest. So we need to use our equation, weir equation 1.383 times elevation times crest elevation. And I want to fix this because when I drag the formula down, I won't, don't want that to change. So this is power 3 by 2. And then I'm going to drag this down, which gives me the outflow over the weir. So if I know the height of water over the weir, I can tell you the flow rate, right? And I can use this information to calculate my 2s by dt plus O values, which is two times storage divided by delta t, dt is 30 minutes, which is the difference in this time step here. And this is 30 minutes and my flow rate is in meter cube per second. So I want to have consistent units. So I'm converting that 30 minutes to seconds plus my outflow. Again, I want to fix this delta t because when I drag this formula down, I want to make sure that it doesn't change, right? Um, so you can see as it gets down, there is no change um, in the dt value. And you have the relationship between elevation and storage, which is given here. And then um, 2s by dt plus o, which is my combined characteristic. So we have the information we need. And for the first time, my time step, time at zero is my current time, time at 30 is my future time, right? So it is fair to assume that if my inflow is zero at time zero, before time zero, it should also be zero, right? So it should be zero. And 2s by delta t, again, it's fair to assume that the storage is zero at time zero if nothing is given, right? So uh, we're assuming that the storage is zero, which means two times zero by zero, and my outflow is also zero at time zero, right? So it's all zero. And my, like I said, outflow is zero, and storage is again zero. So if nothing is given, you have to assume uh, storage is zero, but if some information is given, you have to use the corresponding storage value here. All right, so the next step is to figure out I1 plus I2. So subscript one is this, and subscript two is this for this time step. And we know all my I1 and I2 values, so I'm going to drag this formula down. So I have all the information I need, right? So I have all my I1, I2 values. So I have those parameter A values. For 2s by delta t plus O, which is this here, part C, subscript 2, I need to add, to get this, I need to add I1 plus I2, which is this, plus 2s1 by delta t. I have to go back to the previous step because my previous step is here, 1. So I'm going to add that information there. So to get part C, I need to add A at 2 and B at 1, right? Makes sense? All right, you have that. And at this point, 
I know my 2s by delta t. All my 2s by delta t values are here, right? Which means that my 2s by delta t is going to be in between these two values. So my corresponding outflow is going to be in between 0.65 and 1.83, right? So I need to figure out where it is um, or how much it is. For that, I need to use linear interpolation. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to copy these two values here. So paste values. Uh, outflow values are here. So I'm trying to find my outflow for this corresponding 2s by delta t values. All right. So these are my x values and these are my y values. I'm going to re linearly interpolate between those two. So this is my linear interpolator. So if you see my x values are 2.34 and 4.61 and my y values are 0.65 and y2 values are 1.83 and my x value is 2.4. So I'm trying to find my outflow at 2.4. Right, so its value is 0 0.68. Okay, so I know my 2s by delta t plus O and my outflow. To get 2s by delta t minus O, all I need to do is subtract 2 times O, right? So if I subtract 2s by delta t plus O minus 2O, I will get minus O. So negative 2o plus 1o will give me negative o, right? So it will be 2s by delta t minus o plus 2 times outflow will give me that. Okay, so for the next step, again, my step 2 is going to be here and step 1 is going to be here and my 2s by delta t plus o will come from i1 plus i2 plus my 2s by delta t minus o from the previous step, right? So that is 9.038 and I need to figure out where this falls. So my 9.038 falls between 7.420 and 10.702 spaced values and its corresponding outflow values are 3.36 and 5.18 and paste those values. Okay, I can come back and use my interpolator to figure out where it falls. So, so that's 7.42 and its corresponding y1 value is 3.36 and the next value is 10.7 and 1.83 which is 5.1718 and I want my value at 9.038 right so its corresponding value is 4.255 256 and Again, subtracting 2 times O, I get my number here. So, to make my life easy, I can drag these two down and keep interpolating between those numbers, right? So, I need corresponding outflow for 9.526, which is 9.526, calculating is 4.526. Again, next step is I need it for 6.674. 6.674 is between these two values, so I need to interpolate between 4.616 and 7.420, right? So I need to change those numbers here. Again, you don't have to copy them here. I am doing this just so we are um, 
doing it step by step and you can see right so it's 4.616 and corresponding y1 value is 1.83 and 7.42 and my corresponding y2 value of flow is 3.362 so I need it at 6.674 Calculating this, I get 2.954, okay? And then the next value I need is at 5.966, which is coming at 2.568. Same thing, 5.430, it's still between those numbers. So I'm going to calculate it as 2.275 which is 1.974 again uh, it comes out to 4.232 which means I have to go back and interpolate between these two values right um, um, I can do this interpolation continue doing this interpolation and fill my table 0.65 so for 4.232 I have 1 1.63 1.34 1.09 0 0.77, 0 0.48, and 0 0.23. So these are my outflow values um, that I interpolated. You can, uh, if you continue interpolating using the interpolator, you will get this. And the easier way to do this is use the forecast function, which is um, set all of these values as known O outflow values and then set all of these values as known to as TT values and use the formula that we have which is a big forecast formula that we use and then uh, use that to interpolate so I'm you know I'm not going to show that here which is a, you know you watch the video and uh, you can figure it out yourself but all we're doing is uh, setting these two arrays and then interpolating in between those uh, values okay uh, hopefully this explains the modified pulse method better and if you have any questions please reach out to me and i want to make sure everybody gets this thank you bye